Welcome to Spotlight. Today we're talking to the authors of a new book, Creating an Opportunity Society. Isabel Sawhill is Senior Fellow of Economic Studies and Co-Director of the Center on Children and Families at Brookings. She is a nationally known budget expert focusing on domestic poverty and federal fiscal policy. Ron Haskins is a Senior Fellow of Economic Studies and Co-Director of the Center on Children and Families at Brookings. A former White House and Congressional Advisor on Welfare Issues, Ron is an expert on preschool, foster care, and poverty. He was instrumental in the 1996 overhaul of national welfare policy. Interestingly enough, Isabel has worked with the Clinton administration and Ron served in the Bush administration. First, let's talk about what is an opportunity society, Isabel? Well, I think an opportunity society is one where everyone has a shot at what we uh, usually call the American dream. And uh, it's not a society in which you're guaranteed uh, to be middle class and to have all of the good things of life, but it's a society in which there are ladders uh, so that everyone uh, does have a, an equal uh, chance to get there. And your book explores... Let me add something to sure, that. Surely, also, I think it's really important to note the American public agrees with what Bell just said. The American public does not think that people should have guaranteed outcomes. They should have opportunity and then it's up to individuals to make their own way. And poll after poll for 50 years now, the American public has been very clear on this message. They want equal opportunity. They do not necessarily expect equal results. I think the other thing we would both say is that a lot of children <clears throat> in America start way back from the starting line. Uh, they begin life with three strikes against them. And so a society that really is committed to opportunity has to also be committed to do, doing something about the fact that we don't all start at the same starting line. Well, let's talk about those kids who start a little bit further back in the starting line. And your book explores three routes to upward mobility, work, education, and strong families. And by strong families, you suggest have children after you're married. Talk about those. Well, all of our research that we've done for four or five years at least now has shown that if you do just those three things, finish high school at least, we'd like you to do go beyond that, uh, if you work full time and if you do uh, delay childbearing until you're in a committed long-term relationship, that's going to make all the difference. In fact, three quarters of the people who do all three of those things are going to be at least middle class, if not better, by the time they're adults. Uh, if you don't do any of those three things, uh, your probability of being poor increases to about 75 percent. It sounds like a, a three simple steps, but of course it's not, is it, Ron? No, I, I think they're fairly simple. I mean, every, every child growing up, if they hear this message repeatedly, complete high school, uh, uh, get a job, get married. Bell says be in a committed relationship, but I don't think that works. We could have an argument about that if you'd like to see that. Um, those are not complex rules. Now, they are, they are difficult for some subgroups uh, for various reasons to, to fulfill all three of those, but they're not sophisticated, very difficult, expensive, completed four-year college degree, for example, mm -hmm. which would a lot of Americans would say that's the real way into the middle class, and of course it is, but a lot of people get to the middle class that, as you could tell by Bell's comment, uh, without completing a four-year degree. So I think these, these are realistic goals that we, the teachers, the President of the United States, uh, ministers, community leaders, parents could set for children and, and truly expect them to meet all three and feel disappointed if they don't. Uh, on mobility, you show that there is greater mobility in many European nations than in the U.S. Can you describe any findings and fill us in on what this says about our notions of the American dream? You know, most people think of the United States as the land of opportunity. And we have that sort of in our mindset as Americans. But it turns out that although I think we are the land of opportunity for many immigrants, 
for native born Americans, what the research and the data show is that your chances of uh, moving up the ladder are not as great as they are in some other advanced countries. In other words, if you think about how much influence your parents' socioeconomic status has on your chances of getting ahead, they're actually greater in the U.S. than in some other advanced countries. Why so we is need that? to pick our parents well is another <laughs> right. way of putting it. Why is that, though? Why is there that uh, in, in the U.S. that is the case, but in other countries they seem to be able to overcome that? Well, Ron may want to come in on this, but I think it's because our education system isn't strong enough. Uh, if you think about it, in a society in which there was no education to break the ties between your family background and where you end up, there wouldn't be a lot of opportunity. Uh, but uh, in a society that has a relatively weak education system, um, class and family background matter more than they do in a society that has a very strong education system. Yeah, I agree that we do have a weak education system at the elementary and secondary level, but our universities are as fine as any in the world, and that, ironically, could contribute to this problem as well, because people who go to university, people who get a four-year degree, even people who get a two-year degree, have a tremendous advantage on almost every major. So it is true that the weakness of our system, which is primarily that low-income and minority kids don't do well. That is really the, sh the glaring weakness of our system. And we spend a lot, of, it's not like we haven't noticed it, we spend a lot of money, we tr have new programs. I mean, education is on a roller coaster all the time because they're trying this, trying that. And so far, not very many things have worked very well. So until we solve that problem of achievement, and we're not talking about, again, very abstract things here, we're talking about learning to read and write, and uh, what are called social emotional behaviors are important too, that people have to learn to behave, follow directions, that sort of thing. Uh, until we solve those problems, we're, we're, we will have problems with, uh, with opportunity. But I wanna clarify, it's not like we don't have opportunity. There's a lot of opportunity in the United States. There's a lot of movement in the United States. We have less of it than other countries. Um, part of the reason could be also because we have such a huge disparity in incomes in the United States more than any other country. The people at the top in our distribution are have really just outdistanced the rest of the distribution by an amazing amount, especially in the last decade or so. This could be changing now because the recession, often during recessions, people at the top get hit. But then as soon as you get out of the recession, they go like mad again. So we, we have, have a tremendous range of incomes in the United States, and that's probably another factor as well. Do you think the people in this country are aware of the disparity that we have in this country in wealth, and do you think they care? Yes, I think they, yes, on both counts. Uh, polls show that Americans do care. But one thing, you know, some people might call this limitation, Americans are different than other, than citizens in other countries. First of all, they're amazingly optimistic. In a poll done in January, right you know, in the midst of this, the worst recession since the Great Depression, Americans and black Americans were the most optimistic that their kids are gonna do better than they did. And that they may be having trouble now, but they're gonna be able to get themselves out of it. So Americans have an amazingly positive uh, outlook. Uh, so I think there's a, a lot of reason to be optimistic about the future. If we could help them more, especially when they're young. In preschool, that's why we rec made these recommendations. In preschool, K-12, post-secondary. Also, there are probably things we can do on family. There are definitely things we can do on teen pregnancy. Um, it would make a big difference, and there's plenty of evidence to show that it would. 